Well, it looks like your butt's all better. Thanks. That's the last time I cosplay in the theater. Hello, it's me, Box Thoughts! Okay, before we get into anything critical, I just gotta say that I love this movie. Probably more than you do. And if you're looking for some Nintendo entertainment that systematically checks all the fanboy boxes, you'll definitely get a kick out of this. Yeah, I'm not even gonna hide it. I was the full-grown nerd in Mario attire with my Switch by my side, listing off all the music cues, enemy cameos, and Easter eggs in my head, like some kind of sentient issue of Nintendo power. To some it would have sounded impressive, and to others it's as sad as a car crash in real time. If you know the worst, you got no flight. But at the end of the day, I don't really care, because I had a boatload of fun. I mean, how could you not when a movie has super dynamic cinematography, colorful, sprawling fantasy environments, edge-of-your-seat action scenes where the tides could change in one hit, surprisingly fun song sequences featuring bands who only had one hit, and, wait for it, Bowser singing and playing piano. Yeah, no embellishment necessary. What you heard is what you get. There's nothing else I want now in life. Floating my lair downtown. Rays in hell, flames on point like a spike shell. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is a movie that is not ashamed to have the name Super Mario Brothers plastered on it, without an inch of cynicism or embarrassment to be found. Every inch of this film is crafted with love and care for the fan base it created, wearing its entire legacy like a badge of honor. And it completely succeeds in bringing the gold standard of the games to the silver screens of theaters. That being said, there is a second edge to this sword. While the references and visuals will be more than enough to set your world on fire, when you look closely at the story and characters, that's when things start to muddy a little bit. If you've seen a movie, literally any movie before, you know exactly how this is going to play out. It's the hero's journey stripped down to the absolute bare essentials with no unique twists and turns to speak of, straightforward character arcs that get little to no focus, emotional scenes that feel so irrelevant that they tend to just speed through them, and more cliches than coins in New Super Mario Bros. 2. It's about as stock as the broth in most chicken soups. This very basic approach also affects some of the characters as well. You know, go turtle excluded. Like take Peach and Toad for example. While it is incredibly entertaining to see them band together and get shiitake done while everyone else cowers in fear, especially the climax where Peach manages to be cold and hot at the same time, there really isn't too much more to them. They do give Peach a backstory to show why her and the Toads are so close, and it is cool to see Toad as the sole member of his species that stands by Peach in times of crisis, even though I imagine that at least one more Toad would be willing to reject orders and help her considering how devoted they are to her. But when you look at things through a writer's eye, that's essentially all they have. Toad is a boss despite being one in a million, Peach is a boss despite sporting a dress and heels, and that's mostly it. Now in addition to the visuals and references, this approach to story and characters is very game accurate as well. Narrative has always been a footnote on the Mario Bros. priority list throughout most of its entries, and this was very much intentional. The man himself, Shigeru Miyamoto, has mentioned before that while he doesn't hate story, internet, he does value things like gameplay and fun experiences over heavy narrative. He's a man who clearly loves and cherishes that whimsical feeling that people get when experiencing a unique and creative world for the first time, both from his employees and from his audience. Kind of like a video game Walt Disney. And as he said in certain interviews, that was his mission statement when it came to the Mario movie. He wanted to recreate the euphoria that gamers experienced when playing with their favorite plumber for the first time, as well as make the initial exposure of new viewers to Mario just as fun. The story would be a basic hero's journey that anyone can pick up and play, much like his games, and he would focus most of his efforts on turning his film into a Star Wars or an Indiana Jones, where the highlights don't center on complex character growth, but instead on grand adventure and fantastical set pieces. Now, some people are obviously not gonna like this, saying that movies are a narrative art form and what works in a game won't work in a movie, the story should be more fleshed out since that's what mainly matters, blah blah blah, and trust me, I sympathize with you guys, since I'm mainly a story and characters guy myself. But did this kind of approach hurt the movie for me at all? No, not in the absolute slightest. I'm of the opinion that movies should be both a story and an experience. Movies aren't just dialogue and thematic depth, they're also colors, sounds, emotions, and raw enjoyment, which is why I always approach movies as both a critic and just a fan of cinema. I wear the glasses and the goofy licensed hat. 
As long as one of the two main pillars of a movie can be greatly satisfying, I usually have a good time. Now there are movies that completely nail both depth and experience, and they're always incredible, but if Mario just wants to be an energetic high fantasy popcorn muncher with visuals that captivate and a story that just gets the job done, I have zero problem with that. Mario is definitely a franchise that's proven to thrive when it comes to whimsy, adventure, and spectacle. And honestly, in this day and age, I would much rather have a movie that does everything it can with what little it has than a movie that tries to overstep its boundaries, introduce too much, and then wind up as a mountain of disappointment, confusion, and wasted potential by the end. Less can be more if used effectively, and the Super Mario Bros. movie, in my eyes, is more than I could have asked for. So yeah, the Super Mario Bros. movie gets a hearty recommendation from me, especially if you're a fellow Nintendo fanboy. Opinions may change once I watch the movie again, but for now, it's an exciting little romp that was made for the big screen. With that said though, what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this film packed with Nintendo power? Or do you agree with the critics in saying that a stronger narrative should have been in play? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.